that this is the trend. You are born with uh, technology. You're born in the age of technology. So a uh, lot of kids which I get uh, always have this question that, are we the right ones for AP computer science examination? So I'm here to answer your questions. A small introduction uh, to me from, uh, about myself. I am Pooja, Pooja Prakash. I have been teaching computer science for the past uh, more than 20 years. I've been teaching CBSE. I've been taking IGCSE computer science and uh, AP examinations. I've been preparing my students for the past four years now. So I have the fifth year, which is coming up uh, for the trainings. So let's talk about computer science. What is it that is computer science? Why computer science? Why are you opting for computer science? So you should be able to answer certain questions when you go for choosing computer science as one of your majors in college. So do you like to use technology? Um, we are born in the age of technology. You are the ones who have seen so many changes. Every few months, you see some change coming up. But how are you adapting to that change is the question that you really need to ask yourself. So are you only an end user? So when we talk about computer science, we say we've got two types of users. One, which is the end user. Uh, you know, it's something like, Somebody has designed some software for us and we are happy using it. We are just happy using it, that is it. So we are the end user. I am using a PowerPoint for creating my presentation and giving my presentation. So I am an end user, but at the same time, do you wonder how a process actually takes place? Oh, if I go and click a button, what happens? How is it internally that I just, kind of, you know, perform an action and something happens, some result is shown to me. You have to be inquisitive. Are you inquisitive about how things actually happen? Do you really want to know more? That is what computer science is all about. So it is basically meant for students who want to solve problems that interest them. So you have to have some thought. You have to have that hunger to know more, okay? So it provides for a strong, engaging foundation. So when you want to take up computer science in your college, you have to have some base. You have to show uh, the people, you have to show uh, the admission officer that, okay, you are keen on taking this up. You are the one who's fit for this. Otherwise, out of the entire thousands of candidates who apply to their college, why would they select you? Right. So AP computer science is a course which is designed in such a way that it is going to give you the base, the foundation, and then you can uh, expand it, extend it forward. So it is actually designed to be the equivalent of a first semester course in computer science. So when you pick up this course, it is basically going to take care of that first semester, the coding section that you would be covering there. And of course, like I said, it would give an edge to your college application profile. Very important for you to build your profile before you actually start applying for college admissions. Let's talk about the emphasis now of the course. So is there any prerequisite that we need? Uh, the only prerequisite that we need is actually uh, a good foundation in mathematics, algebra, linear functions, the Cartesian coordinate system. That is all that you need, but you need a good foundation for that. And of course, you should be willing to actually, uh, you know, uh, have the mathematical reasoning. You have to have a strong mathematical reasoning skills. The course emphasizes on something called object-oriented programming methodology. So when we talk about, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, computer science, we have the latest, which is object-oriented programming. So if you have already uh, uh, been uh, exposed to C++, if you've already been exposed to some uh, programming in Java, you would have an idea what object-oriented programming is all about. 
But the main thing that you need to develop through this course is your problem solving skills, your skills to develop an algorithm. So when I say an algorithm, it is nothing but if I would like to solve this task, how would I divide that task into subtasks, smaller tasks? How will I pick up one small task, complete that, which would lead to the completion of the bigger task and so on. So it also extends an overview of data structures and abstractions. Again, some words related to object-oriented programming. The course tests students on their knowledge of Java. So the programming uh, language which is being used here is Java. Now I get a lot of questions over here. Why is it that Java is being used? Why not any other language? Why are we not geared up for Python? Well, uh, uh, the way I can answer this question is that earlier the course was testing students on C++ because C++ was the language at that time. And then when Java was developed and Java was being used all across, not just for regular programming, but also for web applications, that is where this course uh, was uh, finally set to Java. They still have not made any changes uh, further changes. So they haven't included Python as of now, but I'm sure that would be in the pipeline. So what are the main goals? What are you going to do? What are your objectives going to be when you take up this course? So you would be expected to write a code segment to produce a given output. So once you've done the syntax of the language, once you've understood the syntax of the language, you would be given certain result, certain output, and you would have to implement or write the code for getting that output. Determine the output of a given code segment. Uh, certain places, you would be given a code segment and you would have to analyze, you would have to go through the entire process and see what the expected output of that code segment would be. Determine the correct code to produce a given output. Again, you may have certain choices that, all right, this is the output that we want. These are the specific code segments that have been provided to you. Which of them would actually give you the result which has been mentioned? So you would again have to go back revisit your prior knowledge, apply that knowledge, see uh, uh, what the code has in it and what the output would be. Analyze the given code for correctness, equivalence or error. So once you have written a certain code segment or if you've been given a certain code segment, you need to understand that is it correct? Or if two code segments are given to you, are both of them going to give you the same result or is there going to be some difference? Or is there any error or is there any mistake in the code that you would not receive the output that you desire, right? Now, at this point of time, I would like to mention one more thing. You can have different uh, programs written for a certain question. So if I give you a question and I say, write a program to do a certain, to perform a certain task, if I give this question to five different candidates, I may not get the same result. So logic is what comes to you naturally. That is what is logic. And your logic that you have used to solve that question is what that question would give you. Now, the only thing over here is that every code that you write may not be the most efficient one. So your code gives you the correct output. However, it may not be the most efficient one as far as your computer or your CPU processing is concerned. So you would have to actually judge that. You would be learning the techniques through this course wherein you will find out that, oh, I wrote this code. It's giving me the correct output. However, if I make changes to the code in a certain way, now this code becomes more efficient, right? Gain understanding of social and ethical use of computers 
and thereof the responsible users of technology. What is the aim of everything that's around us? We need to be ethical. We hear everywhere, we should not resort to piracy. Why should we not resort to piracy? Is there anyone who's going to tell us? Yes, of course, we have organizations, institutions, which actually look into that, which actually penalize us if we indulge in piracy. However, the thought has to start from us. The thought has to start from us as individuals. So here we are given that scope that when we are performing a certain task, how am I doing it? Am I trying to design it myself? Am I trying to Google the question and just trying to copy it from there? What is my understanding of the entire scenario, right? So this is something which has a lot of emphasis when you are studying computer science. So now let's talk about the syllabus. So uh, we have 10 units in all. Unit one talks about the basic data types. So when I talk about the word data type, what exactly does it mean? When I talk about computers or using a computer, why am I using the computer? The first and foremost thing that I'm using a computer for could be, I would like to save my work, store my work for future use. I could use the computer for research. Again, research for a particular topic. I could use the computer that, oh, whatever I saved earlier, I would like to now refer to it again. So for each one of us, there could be different ways in which we could use a computer. So when we are talking about storing something on a computer or storing data, you know this word, each one of you knows this word. So when I'm talking about storing data on a computer, what is the type of data that I'm storing? Oh, I'm storing the marks of a kid. Oh, that is just numbers. I might use those numbers for some analysis later. So I would probably be talking about something called numeric data type. But then I may want to store some data, which could be a picture. But then is a picture stored directly? No, a picture is not stored directly. How is a picture stored? Or how is sound stored? They are converted to a certain type and then stored. So we're going to talk about some data types. We're going to talk about something called classes. We're going to talk about something where logical decisions are taken. So if I say that a computer has the capability of not only performing arithmetic operations, it even allows us to perform logical operations. You know, the first time any class, when we uh, learn about computers, we say computers have certain units. We have something called an ALU, arithmetic and logic unit. And that time when you're teaching the kid, the kid has no understanding of what is a logical unit. But when you start using computers, that is where you understand, oh, the computer could be given an option that if this option or this condition is true, you should perform a certain set of tasks. However, if that particular option or condition is not true, you have a completely different set of tasks which need to be performed. So logical decisions that need to be taken using something called the if statement. Then we've got some special data types, some special data structures, something called arrays. Uh, if you've done math and if you've done something called matrices in math, arrays are likened to matrices. So single dimension or the 1D arrays, or we have multi-dimensional 2D arrays. So they are related to matrices where data is stored in rows and columns. And then we speak about uh, something called classes. Classes typically are related to object-oriented uh, paradigm. Inheritance typically related to object-oriented paradigm. And recursion. Recursion is something like being done again and again. A certain step is performed again and again. That is what is recursion, all right? 
Now the exam overview. So we have a three hour long examination, okay? Out of which 40 multiple choice questions are there in the first part, which is uh, for 90 minutes. The weightage of that section is 50% of the, the entire thing, the entire task. Then the next section is a free response question section, wherein you are given four questions to answer in 90 minutes. And the weightage is again 50% of the entire examination. Another thing that you can note here is that when you're giving your examination, when you go to the center for giving your examination, there is something called a Java quick reference sheet, which is provided to you. That sheet consists of some functions, something called the Java library, uh, which has some functions. So those functions, the list is given to you. Uh, and if you want, you can refer to it. If it's not a compulsion that you have to refer to it, but if you want, you may refer to that. So if I talk about the MCQ, the multiple choice section, see the weightage of the questions. Unit one has a weightage of 2.5 to 5%. Unit two covers 5 to 7.5%. Unit three is a 15 to 17.5%. If you see iterations, iterations is where you repeat a certain task a number of times and perform it. So iterations cover a big chunk, a huge chunk is covered by these iterations. So if you've done a programming before, then something called the for loop, something called um, uh, the while loop, if you've done that, the do while loop, that's all part of iteration. So 17.5 to 22.5%. Uh, is the weightage for this section. Classes cover five to 7.5%. Arrays in all the three units, unit six, seven, and eight. See the chunk, 10 to 15%, 2.5 to 7.5% or 7.5 to 10%, that's the weightage. So arrays do take up a lot of work. Arrays need a lot of uh, uh, you know, a time. You must put in a lot of effort for this particular section, unit six, seven, and eight. Then we come to inheritance. Inheritance is again a 5 to 10% coverage and the unit 10 recursion is 5 to 7.5%. This is about the MCQ uh, section. If we talk about the free response section, if we talk about that, uh, methods and control structures, a particular topic covers 12.5%. Classes covers 12.5%. If you see equal weightage is given to the four questions that you get. Some sample exam questions for you to see. So the MCQs. So if you read this question, you will find a code segment has been given to you and you are expected to tell what the output of that segment would be. So you're given certain options, certain choices, and one of them would be the correct one naturally. See another question. So you've been given statements, statements, a single statement written in different ways, presented in different ways. And there the question asks you that particular variable would get a value. So what would be the best choice for getting a random integer between 25 and 60? Inclusive, inclusive of 25 and 60. If you see another question here. So here they are giving you certain code segments and you need to analyze, you need to understand and then decide which of them would give a specific result. So you have to decide which is that uh, code which would give you uh, the value of the variable NUMS such that each element contains the square of its original value. So which of them would be the right choice? You could have more than one, which is the right choice, or you could just have one. So the options are given and you need to select the correct option. 
another type of uh, question. This is based on the classes, the concept of classes and objects. Again, what would be, if you look carefully at the question here, so they've given you two classes and they've asked you, what is the result that would be printed if this code is executed? If we talk about the free response questions, now here is where you need a lot of patience. You need to have that patience, that resilience to actually read the question. So here you would be given a question which starts with the case. And then if you look carefully, this case would be implemented in the form of a certain program. So they've given you the structure of the program. They've also told you certain segments, what that segment is doing. So if I have a function here defined, what is that function going to do? What is that method going to do? They've given you that. Again, a certain segment already given. See this? This is the part where they would ask you to write the code to be implemented in part A. So there would be a particular function which they would want you to write. Similarly, see this part here, the last one towards the end. That's again another function. They would expect you to write the code. Now there's a very interesting uh, aspect to these questions. If I continue this, if you look carefully, you will find, excuse me, you will find that once the structure has been given to you, beyond that, you will have the question with an example. The entire question would be explained via an example. Can you see this? Example one, what are the values which are being returned by a certain function? What is expected? What is that particular function which you are going to write? You are expected to write this function. What should it return if these are the inputs? If these are the inputs, what should it return? So they've given you a kind of an example what your entire question should look like. After giving you this structure is where your actual question comes. So the simulate function which they had shown us, they expect you to write the code for that function. So A, you need to have that patience in you to read through and understand the different portions. Some places where the code has been provided, some places where they've told you this is what the code is going to do. So everything, you need to have that patience to actually understand the question and then attempt it. So tentative timeline, plan the exam date and register. You must be aware that uh, you have a regular registration process for the AP examinations. So you could uh, register there or you have another sitting which is the late registration which happens somewhere in the month of March. In case you miss your date for certain reason, you could even register at that time. But then if you've decided you have made a plan that you are going to give this examination, it is always better to register well in time and prepare for it. Keep in mind the examination format that you prefer. So since the past year, uh, we've seen that because of the scenario which has come up, we've got two types of examinations that happen. You've got a pen and paper examination and you also have something called the online examination. Though you have to go to the center and give the exam, still you can choose whether you want the pen and paper kind of a format or you want the online examination. So depending on the center that you choose and depending on the format that you want, you can make your choice and register. Keep at least four to six months for preparation. Well, if you come from a programming background, I would still suggest that you should have four months because you have your school examinations uh, there. You have so many other commitments that could crop in at the last minute. So you have to make sure that your preparation happens, you know, before well in time 
rather than uh, sitting at the last minute and trying to cover up that would not help you because this is an exam which is going to you know set your entire life for you so you need to prepare for it one month before the examination so the date that you've chosen one month before that is the time to just revisit your concepts once and finally go in and practice the past papers this is the time which will be the be all and the end all for you so that one month you should not be doing the studies there you should just be solving questions understanding questions reading questions timing yourself timing yourself is so so important in this examination you cannot just kind of lose it you can't do that so this is the time where you have the practice paper you put a timer you take it and then you start attempting the question and see how much time do you take so if i have 90 minutes to solve four questions am i taking too much time on question number 1 what is it like so you need to time yourself here tips now this is a very very interesting thing very interesting it's very easy for me to give you tips but ultimately it is on you what suits you so reviewing the syntax of java you've done java before fantastic you've done java in a certain way but now is the time to do it as per your examination format right so you must take out time see the syllabus see the detailed syllabus which is available on the website on the college board website and then revise your concepts your syntax according to that prepare and revise your concepts loops iterations comprise a big chunk of the examination you have to have a lot of practice of different scenarios comprising loops fantastic amazing uh, thing that has been developed you're going to be impressed you're going to really be uh, amazed at how different ways could be used to perform the same task read the questions carefully and patiently patience is the key often you will get hints on how to answer the question within your question so if you see if you remember i just showed you the slide so in the free response questions they will give you the entire example they'll explain the example what exactly they expect so you have to look for those hints and you have to be very patient with your thought just shut everything what is around you and then answer the question and of course keep coding again hard work effort resilience um i know at this stage everybody is telling you this is the time this is the time now is the time i would definitely want to say the same thing now is the time if you've decided you have to give this exam it is better you put in the best effort and just give it you don't want to go back and say oh had i put in a little more effort i would have really done a better job you have to do it this is the time for you yes do not be afraid to ask questions it is seen that lot of times we hesitate we haven't understood something we hesitate we don't ask questions we fear that the teacher will say oh this is such a silly question no 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 please don't do that do not do that this is the most important part and the more you talk that is where you know the concepts can be seen in a different line light altogether yeah so you must ask questions you must spend time on the base if the foundation is good you can answer any kind of question that comes to you but if your foundation is shaky if you're trying to just learn up certain things and not do any other thing then you know it's going to be a little tough on you so please get into discussions ask question whatever question comes to you please ask now every learner has a different learning style every learner has their own pace of learning i cannot say that oh i um, i am a quick learner so the other person should also be a quick learner no 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 it's not that you have to set your own pace you have to decide that okay i am going to take so much time and do it and why not don't think you can't do it that's the first mistake we we make we hear from people very tough this examination is very tough no it is not tough if you have made up your mind and if you have practiced it's not tough but if you haven't 
practice enough, then even the simplest thing would be tough. So you must give it time and practice. So I would like to thank you for being patient listeners, wishing you a very bright year ahead, crucial year ahead. Uh, my contact details are given here. You could take a screenshot and keep them with you. Any time, any questions, any help that you may need, please feel free to contact me. You could call me. If I don't answer, I would call you back. You can leave a message or you can mail me your questions, your doubts. I could even help you with that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. Wishing you all the very best. So that was really a superb session from Pooja Ma. And like she covered almost all the different aspects from the point that how exa why exactly Java has been asked, why, why has it been changed from C++, or how is the syllabus being uh, distribution, uh, distributed, uh, what are the weightages of the exam in the free in the free part, the response part, in the MCQ part, and the best part was like the timeline of the preparation, like where where uh, what are the tentative time you would require, what are the prerequisites for one person to take out for this. So it was really a super session, ma'am. Thank you a lot. Even Thanks. you covered few sample questions, so it could give a good fair enough of idea what are the type of questions being covered. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the super session. Uh, I would like to moderate a few questions, ma'am. And uh, so the first question is, uh, it's a question like, I have done ICT at IGCSE level. How shall I ideally proceed for this AP exam? Mm -hmm. So uh, ICT is actually very different from the computer science, which is offered at, at IGCSE. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that ICT does not have any coding. ICT is more based on the tools Microsoft Office tools or Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, web designing, right? So you would have to put in, uh, uh, if you do not have any programming background, then you would need to start from the scratch. You would need to. Mm -hmm. So you must start programming now. So you have certain courses which are available across Coursera, edX, you've got YouTube videos. You can pick up the skills from there. And before you register for this, you should go through the syllabi. See what is it that you're looking for. Yeah, because this is the time which you can spend extra before you come up to the format of the exam. If you do not have any programming background, then you must first get that background and then see the format of that particular examination. Okay, okay. that's great. Uh, this question is related to uh, CS major. Like, what all should I learn to be ready for CS engineering in terms of languages, coding, and other stuff? Uh, see, what I suggest to all my children who've gone in for computer science is that you don't depend on a language. It's not that you have to depend on C++, you have to depend on Java or Python. What is required is your logic. So you have to build your analysis, analytical skills. You have to build your logical skills, your mathematical reasoning. That is what you need to build. So you can pick up the syntax of any language that is being taught to you once your skills are in place. So basically, it's not uh, in context with languages. Rather, it would be recommendable to develop the analytical skill. That is what the problem solving skills, or, or, analytical, yes, right. yes, sir, yes. Okay. Because language, now you have Python after two years, what you have, we don't know. So every year the things are changing, every alternate year the things are changing. So you mm -hmm. cannot say that, oh, I have to know this language, I have to know that language, no. It's mm -hmm. not about the language. If you know your concepts, if your base is strong, you can pick up any syntax. You know, we at our level started with something called QBasic, mm -hmm. which was hardly anything. Yeah. And now we are teaching Python, Java, we are doing all that stuff. Correct. Okay. Uh, the next question is, ma'am, how will we have to submit our answers online? Can we take pictures of our code or maybe for the future reference? I'm not sure uh, what this question actually means. Submit your answers online for what actually? Where would you want to submit the answers online? The exam is, uh, if you're talking about the examination being the online thing, 
then you have to kind of type in you they have a screen wherein you're supposed to put your answers and then submit it okay. if you're talking about the examination i'm not sure of this question okay. no uh, what resources what resources would you recommend for self preparation there is not one resource now you are so lucky you've got so many resources across the internet i mean uh, be it videos be it uh, textbooks you know anything and everything is available even for ap preparations you have these uh, the courses which are given through coursera you have a course through edx udemy is offering you courses so you could go through that but see ultimately it is your practice it's not about hearing it's not about reading it is about coding because what question is going to come in your examination how will you apply it if you haven't practiced enough yeah. so it's all about practice please remember that okay uh, from the book perspective is baron's book alone enough um uh, again that is your last month before the exam baron's book or uh, the princeton book that is there that is the last thing that you do the revision that you do before your examination that is not what you do when you are studying for that course you don't do that so along the study that is where you actually dive into the programming language and you practice every aspect of the programming language and then in the last one month you pick up a book baron's fantastic but again remember only in the last month for revision that's where you get the format of the questions mm -hmm. right uh what would be the weekly time commitment for apcs uh 6 months before the exam if the child is an oracle certified java professional already uh in this case uh, what i can suggest is that um, you can see the course you can see the syllabus and then decide what is your knowledge level where are you if you feel you already know it all fantastic yeah then you can simply just um, uh, you know kind of just take an overview as per the examination format do the revision practice papers that should not take you more than 2 months the last 2 months are more than enough for that okay but okay. if you feel there is something which is lagging then definitely you'll have to push your uh, preparation a little before so basically it would be great if in case someone tests before uh, starting the preparation to see their selves where do they lie they should see that sir definitely they should actually go through the syllabi in a lot of detail see the minute things which are mentioned there okay uh, so this is a question for you ma'am specific very much uh, so do you also tutor for ap csa and where uh, yes i do i do tutor this is my fifth year of uh, tutoring also yes so uh, presently i am based in noida but um, uh, i do take online classes also there are certain kids who've not been able to travel uh, because i've got two kids uh, from mumbai i've got one kid um, uh, from meerut who's taking this up so uh, i do take online uh, uh, classes also yes okay so mama has already uh, listed her uh, email id you can rewatch the video on our youtube channel and surely contact her and uh, so considering the time limits we'll just take uh, this question you can answer uh, personally to mama on her email about the charges and all so i would like to take a leave here mom and it was really a super session thank you once again for being here Thank so, you so much sir thank you very much for having me here it was a pleasure thank you yes. and to all I, the students yes is ma'am no i just hope that you know if you've decided please make sure you put in your effort hard work there is no substitute for hard work and effort <laughs> so to all the students stay tuned for our closing session for the ap fair at 4 o'clock and the uh, and there would be a next one more session at 5 o'clock about admission officers how their perspective is about ap exam scores how do they review this profile and how how exactly the profile has been affected with the strong ap scores so stay tuned for 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock session thank you ma'am and the session here